Hey, welcome back. All of us are familiar with RC circuits. They are the most granular blocks of all ICs and in fact are an interviewer's favorite. For some reason, interviewers of an analog design profile interview just love to play around with those circuits to test your concepts. If you aren't familiar with those, I would strongly encourage you to strengthen those concepts first. You can check out videos by Dr. Nagendra Krishnapura from IIT Madras. Another approach could be to simulate RC variants on some simulator like LT Spice and analyze the results. Could you have predicted the result without calculation just by intuition? Try to build your intuitions from the results and make sure you justify each statement you make to yourself in the process. With that being said, let's dive into today's video. An analog designer named X was given a voltage source which was switching between 0 to 1 volts and he was asked to produce a reference voltage which goes from 0 to 0.5 volts. Overconfident about the problem, X said, easy, I have V in and I can use two resistors of 1 kilo ohms in series and take the output from their intermediate node. Now, when X connected this reference voltage to the next stage, which was designed by someone else, he noticed that there is some delay in the switching process as in the reference voltage doesn't switch as fast as the input source. X was clever enough to figure out that this was due to the input capacitor of the following stage, which created a pole at omega equal to 2 by RC and thus caused a delay. For those of you wondering how, we shot the input voltage source and look at the effective resistance across the capacitor, which is just R in parallel with R, that is R by 2. Thus, the effective time constant associated with the capacitor is RC by 2, and consequently, the pole lies at 2 by 2 pi RC. I have attached a simulated waveform of the output for both a transient and an AC analysis for you to verify that the pole frequency matches with the hand calculations and that the transient waveform has a delay due to the pole. Now the question is that what can be done so, so as to make the reference voltage switch along with the input without a delay? Well, the answer is quite straightforward. All you have to do is add a zero, which in loose sense would compensate the delay added by the pole without introducing any additional pole. This can be done by placing a capacitor in par parallel with the top R. Okay, great. But how do we know that this would add a zero and not add any pole? Well, a quick tip is that if you see multiple paths from the input to the output, then there is a high chance that you have a zero. To calculate the zero frequency, assume that the output is at zero volts. That would mean that no current flows into the bottom capacitor and resistor, since the voltage across them is zero. This would also mean that the current through the top capacitor, which is SCV in, plus the current through the resistor, that is V in by R, equals to zero. This is true due to KCL. Solving this, we get S equals to minus one by RC as the zero frequency, which is same as the pole frequency, effectively cancelling it. To understand why the added capacitor doesn't add a pole, we look at the number of independent voltages needed to define the capacitor voltages. So, if we fix the voltage at this node, then both the capacitor voltages are defined. Thus, we only need one independent voltage to define the capacitor voltages and hence just have one pole. If we short the input, we get two C's in parallel and two R's in parallel. Hence, the time constant and the pole locations remain unchanged which by the way is cancelled by the zero. On further analysis, we can say that at DC, the caps are open and the output is simply R upon 2R times V in, which is V in by 2. Whereas for a high frequency, meaning at the time of switching, the caps will be shorted and would essentially act like a capacitive divider, resulting in V out equal to C over 2C times V in, which is also V in by 2. Thus, we get an all pass response. The nerdy lot of you can actually do the whole hand, hand analysis and calculate the transfer function to get that we get to see that we get an all pass response. I have attached the corresponding simulation as well. It will be interesting for you to ponder over what will change if I change the values of one of the capacitor from C to 2C or if I change the values of one of the resistors from R to 2R. A hint would be to think in terms of the limits. When the caps are shorted, and when they are open. 
I would like to conclude the video with an analogy taught to me by Dr. Ashwin from IIT Kanpur who taught me multiple courses related to circuits. He said, poles are like naughty children and zeros are like strict parents. You need strict parents around to control naughty children. That's exactly how zeros control the mischievous activities of the poles. All right, that's it for today, folks. If you made it so far, I appreciate you. Until next time, peace.